Hello everyone, welcome back to what is now my 20 week pregnancy update. If you don't know me already, my name's Christy and I already have a one year old daughter called Grace and I'm currently pregnant with our second child who will be due at the end of December this year. So I'm halfway through my pregnancy now. Please let me start by saying I'm not looking or feeling my best today, but I will get up, like get into that in the pregnancy update. So I was debating whether I actually wanted to come on and do my 20 week update today which is actually the last day that I'm 20 weeks pregnant or whether I wanted to wait until I was feeling a little bit better and combine it with the 21 week update but actually I think it's quite important that I can show and document the highs and lows of pregnancy and unfortunately for me this week it's been an enormous low um hence why i'm i'm i know i'm not looking how i would usually want to look i'm feeling really drained emotionally physically it's just been a really tough week for me and the main thing i guess if i take you through the timeline of events is that I was getting over a throat infection that I'd mentioned in my last couple of videos. My daughter goes to nursery two days a week and once they start in nursery, they just bring home infections all the time and it's just constant. And I get it because as a parent, if I didn't send my daughter in every time she had a runny nose, she'd never be in nursery because they do just pick things up all the time and they have like no immune system or a reduced immune system in comparison to us so they are always picking things up usually you get away with having like a mild cold but I had this throat infection that didn't seem to get better or didn't get better quickly by the end of the second week I had um, got some antibiotics prescribed by the doctors and that was starting to improve my symptoms and I was starting to feel on the mend again but it really did take a good couple of weeks to get to that point. Then on the Saturday, so on the Saturday just gone, when we got up in the morning Grace was sick in the morning um, after she had her milk and then she had a snack and then she had a drink like over the course of the morning and at each Point that she had something to eat or drink she was then sick but there wasn't any um any other symptoms really like she was completely fine within herself and it wasn't like a really really poorly sick it was just kind of like it went down and like a few minutes later it came back up so I thought maybe she'd had something at nursery that hadn't agreed with her and maybe she just had a bit of an upset stomach and I didn't really think that much of it because they always seem to have something that afternoon I went to my mum and dad's for a takeaway and we just hung out with like the kids and stuff and then Sunday we just had a family day at home. On Monday morning I woke up and I said to Steve I just feel really really unwell. Um, like it was like my morning sickness had returned but it was um, like sometimes with morning sickness it's just a feeling of like nausea and just general like uncomfortableness but this was like a real sicky feeling like I was going to be sick. Grace goes to my mum's on a Monday so I asked Steve if he could take her to my mum's because I just didn't feel up to the drive and by the time he had taken her I'd been sick in that morning already so I made arrangements not to be at work. I'm actually working from home at the moment so I just made arrangements not to be on my laptop on meetings and stuff because I was just feeling unwell and was being unwell. Things just deteriorated really quickly from there for me, for Steve and for my mum and dad and all of us ended up with a bout of norovirus, what we think was norovirus. It was just horrendous, like I've never had a sickness bug like this before to the point where and it's the only time I can ever recall this happening in my life. I couldn't actually drink water. Like water was just making me sick. And I was concerned about it, obviously, immediately because I couldn't keep water down. And I'd had a drink the night before. 
but it was getting later and later in the afternoon and I was like, I'm approaching like 24 hours without any fluids. It can't be good for me and it can't be good for the baby. So I rang my GP and they advised me to ring triage, which I did. Unfortunately, triage didn't want to see me and I have mixed feelings about this. I personally think they should have done and perhaps i I should have been more pushy that I wanted to be seen because I knew I had gone quite a long time without fluids and there didn't seem to be an end in sight. But they asked me not to come in because they didn't want me to spread the infection. So I understand it from their point of view, but also obviously people in hospitals have infections. That's the nature of hospitals, like people still need treatment. So triage didn't want to see me and I like, obviously hadn't eaten anything, hadn't drunk anything when I went to bed that night. That afternoon was um, like Grace was home with us by then because my mum and dad rang at about 11 o'clock in the morning and said they were too unwell to care for her, which is completely fair enough. So we went and got her, but that afternoon with her, with me and Steve just completely out for the count was like the hardest afternoon of parenting that I've had so far and like I thought I was exhausted before but this was just another level so that carried over into Tuesday I stopped being sick by the Tuesday but I haven't really recovered any appetite since then I can now drink and I can now um I've had like a few things over the last few days but I added it up and I think my total calorie intake has been about 500 calories so I'm certain that I've like lost weight and I've been worried about what impact that would have on the baby. This morning I actually rang my midwife because I knew that she was in clinic at my GP surgery so I rang um, on the off chance that I could go and see her and the receptionist was like, we need to phone triage. And I was like, I've already phoned triage. They don't want me in. My midwife, when I eventually got through to speak to her, offered for me to go and drop in a urine sample, which I did. So I do have ketones in my wee, which would obviously su like support the idea that I'm dehydrated from the lack of water and from the lack of food. However, it's not at like the threshold for IV treatment. So again, they've asked me not to come in and just to try and manage it at home. But it's just been a tough week. I had like a complete breakdown on the phone to the midwife because I just, I get that they don't want me in because I'm not well but I feel like this should be the time that I should be getting the most support and I'm I've been consistently reassured that the baby's completely fine and she'll take everything that she needs from me but at the same time I feel the worst I've ever felt and it would just be good to I don't know have some sort of acknowledgement of that or um like someone to just check me over for reassurance purposes or whatever it is but they don't seem keen to do that and I feel like now that I'm like at the end of the sickness part and I'm starting to be able to eat a little bit more it's kind of that ship has sailed on the monitoring front and I wish I'd just been stronger on Monday and said actually no I need to come in and I need IV fluids and I just I guess when you're not feeling very well I just didn't have the energy or the confidence to push for what I wanted. They're not pregnancy related in the space of the same few days a car battery fell off of a flatbed truck in front of Steve and his car like went over it obviously he couldn't avoid it and that scraped all of the underneath of his car and caused an engine leak and then when we um, were in bed one night, Steve was just having a shower just before we went to bed. When he got out of the shower, the water pump was still going um, and we went into the airing cupboard and the water pump was just like flooding 
water like flooding water and it had come is like pouring through the extractor fan downstairs and coming through the kitchen ceiling so it's just been a few days of just one thing after another and it's like i guess it those things in isolation would be fine but it's the fact that they've all happened within like three or four days it's just been like a really tough week for me in pregnancy. I feel like I've not been able to dedicate good and positive energy to this pregnancy because I can't catch a break with sickness. I'm sick or ill all the time and struggling far more in this pregnancy than I did in my pregnancy with Grace. And then having all these other things going on like in our lives, like unexpected financial outlays and stuff like that it's just it's not been a good week for me and I think it all came to fruition this morning when I spoke to my midwife and had a good cry and I probably needed that but we move on and hopefully I'm looking to a brighter week ahead of me with not like I hope I just start to recover from the sickness the water pump's fixed we're gonna get the car in for repair i just hope we're all the bad things that are gonna happen have happened and now we'll be on the up baby wise at 20 weeks baby is now the size of a cantaloupe melon she has started to grow hair on her head and she can now suck her thumb and yawn as well her heartbeat can also now be heard through a stethoscope. You don't need a Doppler or like an ultrasound scan to hear the heartbeat now. I have tried a couple of times to use like a heartbeat listening app, not for like reassurance purposes, just for fun, but I can't seem to get one that works. I had one with Grace in my pregnancy that did work, but for some reason don't have the app anymore and I can't find it. So I don't know whether they've like deleted the app or whatever. Um, but I can't seem to find one that does work. It's not a big deal, it's just a bit of fun, but um, hopefully we'll be able to hear her anyway, like Steve would be able to hear her with his own ear like as the pregnancy progresses a bit further. An exciting thing that did happen this week before all of the sickness came and all of the um, unfortunate incidents with repairs, etc., is that we went for our 20 week anomaly scan at the hospital. And I was so excited to go, like I just got back a negative COVID test because where the throat infection had gone on so long, I started to think it was COVID. So I'd got that all back and I was so happy that we could go along to our scan and everything was perfect. It was so good. Like everything was developing as it should be. It took us a while to get a look at her face and I understand that they have to check her like nose and her lip for like cleft palate. So I had to go for a walk a couple of times and come back to try and get her to move around. But she's very like wriggly in there and she just didn't want to be seen. And Grace was like exactly the same. And when I looked at their measurements afterwards, like this baby's measurements against Grace, they are almost like identical to within like a few millimetres to where I was with Grace at the same time in my pregnancy. And uh, the only thing that was different was that Grace had, <laughs> she just had an enormous head, like her head was so much bigger, I don't know why, um, than this baby, but all the other measurements like femur length and abdominal circumference and all of that was literally exactly exactly the same even the weight was only like one or two grams off obviously i've been in contact with midwives throughout the week because of the sickness but my next midwife appointment will be at 24 weeks but i've got my um consultant appointment coming up in a couple of weeks time to discuss my plans for a c-section so i'm actually feeling okay about that at the moment i don't really think i've had the headspace to really worry about it in the last week or so um, but I feel okay about that. That'll be over the telephone. As we planned as well, I also had someone come to help us build Grace's wardrobes um, and her drawers in her bedroom. So this is her bedroom currently, but it's set up as a nursery. So there's no point us changing another room into a nursery and changing this into a toddler room. She might as well go into the next room, which is a similar size. So in there, we've managed to get the wardrobes and the drawers built, and I've also built the bed in there which is like a standard single bed um i did think about getting her a toddler bed but i just think she'll outgrow it and 
she'll get used to sleeping in the single bed quickly but that will free up this room then for this baby and mean that I can do a little bit more in terms of personalization so this is very personalized to Grace in here and like I say I will come back and show you um the rooms properly but this has like her name everywhere and all the the prints have her name on and i just want to give a bit of a personal touch to this baby as well but luckily like all of the furniture that we have in here and all of the storage is really functional so like as a nursery it's quite well planned out and um it means that it will work well for this baby as it did for grace and this will obviously be um this baby's cot rather than Grace's as well. So I need to get working on moving Grace into her new room. I'll quickly show you my bump, although I'm wondering whether it might have got a little bit smaller. It feels a bit smaller to me in the last few days. I actually feel quite a bit thinner all over. I'm sure I've lost weight as well, which is obviously not ideal, but I'll show you what my bump looks like anyway. Luckily throughout everything, I've been happy with her movements. Whenever I felt like worried about it, I've gone and sat in like a dark room and drunk something cold and she's responded to that. So I'm comfortable that she's still like moving normally. Obviously it's still so early that she's probably not in a pattern so much, but I can feel movement when I'm trying to look for movement. So I'm reassured that everything's fine with her in the absence of me being able to go into hospital and actually have some monitoring done. So that's it in terms of an update from me this week. This is just one of those things that some women have to deal with when pregnant. You might get an illness that does really knock you for six and I'm hoping now that I'll be on the up and be back to kind of recovery next week now that the throat infection's gone and I'm coming to the end of this neurovirus now like I'm not being sick anymore it's just like working on getting my appetite back and replenishing everything that I've lost in the last few days but I will be back next week hopefully with a much more positive 21 week pregnancy update if you want to follow along my pregnancy journey then please do subscribe and like and comment below to let me know what you'd like to see next any questions you've got and if you like this video and I will see you in my next update Thank you.